Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me and to the side of me. It's tropical house plants. <laughs> so today's video might be a long one, so you might want to strap yourself in. And without me starting to sing and get all my Julie Andrews on and go, these are a few of my favorite things. This is a video about a few of my favorite things, and we're going to be touching on different topics today. And it's it's more of a fun, chatty video. If you're wanting one that I start looking at plants, this might not be one for you. However, if you're based anywhere in the world, actually, most of these are going to be UK specific because that's where I am. But I do encourage you, if you've got your favorite things in all these different topics, do drop them in the comments down below. I would love this to be a bit more of a community chat, if at all possible. So. Some of the topics that I'm going to be covering today are going to be things like new up and coming YouTube channels. And I think the majority of the ones I want to talk about today have also been subscribers on my channel for a long period of time. And we've been chatting, but I do love their actual channels that they've started. So I thought, what, what better place for me to kind of shout them out and say, look, check some of these channels out if you haven't, because they are fantastic. I'll talk about some of my OG all-time favorite YouTube channels as well because I've been here for a while. Some of you might guess who I might be mentioning on some of those. I'll talk about some of my favorite Instagram plant accounts. And some of these might, the Instagram ones, people in the UK probably already might know them. You might not, but the people across the world might not. So some new ones for you to be introduced to. I'll talk about some of my favorite podcasts. I've talked about this before in previous videos, but I will kind of be reiterating that because again, it's some of my favorite things. I've put in some like planty podcasts and do my plant chores around my conservatory. So that's always entertaining for me. I will also be talking about some of my favorite online stores. And again, if you're not based in the UK and you're anywhere else in the world and you wanna mention some of your favorite plant stores, do so down below. A lot of people, Usually when they're kind of first starting their kind of journey into houseplants and collecting houseplants, it's really difficult to find true resources from people that have already been buying for a long time. Let's not kind of be gatekeeping some of these sellers. I know it's it can be a bit of a challenge not to because a lot of times you're sitting there going, the more people that know about this amazing seller that I have found here, the less likely it is that I'm going to find the plant that I'm looking for, but it helps them grow. It helps them bring in more stock. So you're more likely to then find a plant that you want. Think about it that way. I'll also talk about some of my favorite kind of growing media or kind of accessories in that respect as well. Also, I will touch on some of my favorite DIYs that I do in my space. And a lot of you might have seen some of these around and there's been some questions, so I can dive into a bit more detail on those. Some of my favorite instruments and kind of actual tools that I use kind of almost daily in my plant care life, really, collection, depending on how you look at it. And I'll wrap up with some of my, I don't think I've ever done a list of some of my favorite plants currently. I say currently because these things change practically monthly. But yes, without further ado, let's go into the first topic. And I will be having my trusted book in front of me because I've got a list, so don't forget anything. Right, and let's start with some of my favorite new and emerging kind of YouTube channels. A lot of these individuals also have got Instagram handles. I will, for the YouTubers, I will just put their channel because if you go onto their channel, you can find their Instagram handles, but links to nearly everything that I'm going to be mentioning in this video. <laughs> and I apologize to my future self for the sheer volume of editing and admin I'm going to have to do for this video, especially the description. <laughs> um, but yeah, first new channel I want to talk about is one that I only became aware of after I, I went to the most recent uh, plant swap down in London, which was organized by Emma and Lisa. This is a great new channel that I discovered, mainly because I also did a swap with this individual as well. And it is a channel called Roots Ready. And I have got a clip from the creator themselves 
tell you a bit more. What is up, everybody? My name is Lithius, and I am the face, the personality behind Roots Ready. You can find me both on YouTube and on Instagram. On my channel, it's a bit of a light-hearted approach, a lot of education through fun and laughter. I like to express the joy that plants can bring to anyone. I also like to showcase some of the plants that I'm really proud to own. For example, this one over here, which is my Anthurium Luxurians Cross Radicans. This plant has done a lot of growing in the past year. Um, when I first got it, I think it had about two leaves on it and then it was really, really slow to sort of take off. And throughout 2022, through a lot of care and attention, this plant has actually exploded in growth, not only in new growth and new leaves like these gorgeous bright red leaves like this one and this itsy bitsy baby over here, but it's also produced so many inflorescents like this one and this one over here. And there's some more in the making as well. And if you want to learn how I care for my plants, how I get them to bounce back, and just to follow the journey of some of my plants in my collection, do come over and check me out. A huge thank you to Memo for the opportunity to showcase my collection and talk a little bit about what I do over on Roots Ready. Memo is just amazing, so thank you so much. Not only is he busy with his YouTube and life, I'm sure, but he's also just genuinely a very, very nice person to speak to. So thank you. Thank you so much, Memo, for this opportunity. And finally, I just want to say a happy new year to everybody who's watching. And as always, keep planting. Now, moving on to one of the other creators that I really do enjoy not just interacting with on Instagram because they've got a great personality and we geek out about scientific things and linguistic things as well as just plants. It's Pete and Pete's versus plants. And I will obviously link down the video down below. Pete is a great individual. He talks about his collection. Uh, for a long period of time, his collection was in his living room. He's also got a large family. And it's the, the realities of living within uh, the space that you have as big of a collection as it is. And absolutely hysterical. If, just a joy to watch. Also a really good one if I've got some followers that are based kind of close to Australia because Pete is based in Australia. So he talks a lot about the kind of some of the challenges of trying to get some of the plants that might be a bit easier to find everywhere else in the world and what it might be like in Australia. So it might be worth checking him out, not only if you live around there, but highly entertaining channels. So definitely check out Pete and Pete versus Plants. The last one I want to talk about is Jessica and the, the channel, I'm trying to remember the channel because I always keep, it's a very long kind of URL. So it's Jessica Gardening in OK. I'm assuming OK is Oklahoma. Might be wrong. I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the States now are screaming at me, but I don't know the abbreviations of all of the States. I do apologize. But Jessica is an amazing individual. Again, one of these people that I speak to all the time on Instagram as well. And I love watching Jessica's videos because of the sheer level of detail that Jessica goes into with some of these videos. I think one of the first videos is one that she'd sent me herself and it was, I can't remember which Hoya it was, but I just, if you really like to kind of get into the nitty gritty of things, and I know not all of her videos are like this, but wow, when she does go into kind of deep dives it really is quite impressive because there's, you can see the level of research that's been done on all these things, and it's just amazing to see. So definitely check out Jessica Gardening in OK. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to some of the YouTubers that have had existing channels for a while now. And a couple of these first ones, you're probably not going to be surprised by me mentioning them because a lot of people that have been here for a while know that we're also friends outside of the YouTube community. But that doesn't go to say anything about preferences towards their channels. Their channels are amazing. They are really well curated. They've got some fantastic content. And again, I like both of these creators because they bring in the community as much as possible. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is Emma and good growing and the people that are probably on my channel a lot of you probably already follow emma and good growing and emma has been going for a while now i think either just around the pandemic time that she started her channel or just before i can't remember 100 now 
but fantastic, great level of content. She's always really good at also reviewing not just kind of processes when it comes to purchasing plants and getting them in, but also some of the media as well. And a real sense of community there with Emma. So if you haven't already checked out Good Growing, it might be a channel for you to quickly have a look at, basically. The other one is, and again, same ilk, because some of us, some of the times, depending on events that we might all be there, it's like tends to be the Three Musketeers, is Claire and the Jungle Haven. And it was amazing to also meet Claire in person when I finally did, because we started kind of like getting really excited because we, where Claire lives in the UK, I'd lived many years ago and I went to school around there. So it was really kind of fun. Um, Claire's plant collection is absolutely stunning as well. The, the reason why I kind of mentioned Claire and Emma in the same breath is because the people that have been around for a while and have seen their videos, they do a lot of videos together. They're, those two are very good friends as well. So Claire's only just recently finally kind of moved in her own place and she had a fantastic tour of her space recently and how she set that up. And I'm just like, oh my God, I wish I was one of those people that could have those kind of beautiful houses with the sheer level of plants that I have. I can't, but I do love seeing other people's spaces when they're like that because I'm just like, ah, greens and goals. Never going to happen for me. I know myself too well. but beautiful and stunning nonetheless and again fantastic level of videos detail in the videos fun videos as well and videos that bring the community in as well so 100 percent would recommend and i have to my old og that i've been following for years and it's so great to see nikki's coming back to youtube and it's plants pots and what's nots plant plants pots and whatnots Tongue twister, big time tongue twister. I've never been able to say that really quickly in any way or form. But uh, yeah, I, OG fan favorite for me for a very long period of time. And it's interesting because she used to get a lot of comments about rambling and all these things. And I'm just like, I'm the same. I don't mind. I don't mind tangents. Go on tangents. People that have been here for a while know that... <laughs> Tangents are a thing that happened to me too. <laughs> so it's lovely to see Nikki coming back. I know there was a point where through house moves and all that stuff that it looked like we might be losing Nikki altogether because it was difficult with the collection and everything else. But I think she started to come back into it. But yeah, these, these are the ones that I want to talk about. I, I'm not going to talk about the huge, huge accounts, things like Santorina and Kaylee Ellen and Simon Rain Oaks who've been here for a while. Most people have probably already discovered some of those channels and kind of already follow them but yes there are some big big content creators out there as well with years worth of videos to go and check out as well so instagram profiles these are all quite interesting and some of these have also got books as well so i'll mention some of these as well as we go on but the first one I want to talk about is um, the Plant Rescuer, and it's Sarah who runs the Plant Rescuer. Sarah is amazing. The, the kind of videos that she always kind of present is all about that sustainability when it comes to houseplants and making sure that you, we don't waste houseplants. It takes a lot of time, money, effort, environmental impact to get some of these plants to us. And that kind of notion of all of these things are quite disposable isn't the best way to kind of think about it. And Sarah's quite good at challenging us all to kind of think about kind of what we could be doing. And obviously the name Plant Rescuer is because she started her account because she was rescuing all of these struggling kind of half dead plants that people might have been throwing out or wanted to get rid of. And she does definitely give them a new lease of life. And I, the thing that I love about Sarah is she's not bogged down by all the newy, newy stuff that everybody's trying. Sarah's doing a lot of kind of trial and error and things that our parents, our grandparents have done for years and have worked beautifully for some of these plants. She has also got a book out recently. I think it came out just before Christmas. It's one that I have recently ordered. So I'm really looking forward to reading that book as well. But I have heard absolutely fantastic things about it. If you haven't discovered Sarah yet and the Plant Rescuer, definitely check her out. As I said in the very beginning of the video, I will have links for all these people down below. 
The next one is a fun account. If you really want to kind of merge that notion of plants and have a bit of a giggle at the same time, I think Johnny's humor will probably translate to many countries. I'm not entirely sure. He would, like, if you're in the UK, you will 100% get the humor. But Johnny and the bearded plantaholic. And you keep seeing me looking down on some of these notes. And I've talked to these people on a very regular basis online. But you know, when you talk to people, you kind of forget what their profile names is, especially a lot of these individuals that I know by their first name. So that's how we talk. But Johnny is absolutely hysterical. I think Johnny's also on TikTok as well. And yeah, if you really want to have a, a kind of a giggle and a laugh and really kind of find that empathy, does some amazing reels, but he's also really good with plants. And the good thing, and I think the real big thing with Johnny and the reason why everybody falls in love with Johnny isn't just his personality, isn't just his humor, is he's still got that amazing kind of childhood joy that we all have for that kind of moment when you might be getting really first getting into house plants or just get a new plants. But I think Johnny's that's his base level. So absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, just fantastic. Check out Johnny and the bearded plantaholic, definitely. Another one that a lot of people might not know, and this is kind of an interesting individual because we all know him in the community, and it is Nick's Plants 84. 84, I'm assuming Nick was born in 84. I was born in 84 as well, so that was... <laughs> but Nick's an amazing individual. He loves sharing his passion about plants. He also works at Kew Gardens here in the UK. So, and he is possibly one of the nicest people that you will speak to in the plant community on Instagram. Absolutely lovely. He's always got a lot of time for everybody. And he's great at introducing people to new tropical plants that we might not see. Yes, he's into the tropical house plants. He has a lot of the plant, tropical plants that we might have as well. But because of his unique life experiences and working within Q, he also introduces a lot of plants and flowering plants and things like that that we might not all be aware of. And it is really, really quite lovely. And I think there's the occasional cameo from April is Cat. Absolutely fantastic. Definitely check out uh, Nick's Plants 84. Another good friend actually is Cheryl from Cheryl in Motion. And Cheryl's in a different take on houseplants. And we've had discussions about this with Cheryl. The way that she might look at things might not be for everybody, but there's definitely an audience out there for Cheryl because Cheryl really has got a love for plants as well. And if you look at her Instagram profile, you will see the two loves in her life, basically, which tends to be tropical plants and art. She's, a, she's great when it comes to art as well. There's two little dogs as well running around all the time. But Cheryl has got a lot of drool-worthy kind of unicorn-level plants that a lot of people want. And Cheryl's always been one of those individuals that talks about things like plants as an investment. And again, this is a bit that might not be for everybody, maybe not for the people that are doing this just for the passion of plants, but there are a lot of people out there that are really into that as well. And Cheryl definitely kind of talks to that audience quite a bit. And if for no other reason, she's a lovely human being as well. She's a really, really sweet person. Definitely worth checking her profile out because the occasional glimpses of some of these really quite mature at this point unicorn plants is insane. And then we've got Mick Mitty, and I can't remember the profile name, but I will put it at the top there. If you've been in this world for long enough, Mick Mitty needs no introduction. He is the kind of godfather of all things Monstera because he's always out and about in the actual field looking at some of these plants and getting to know them. I was very fortunate to actually meet Mick in person a few months back. And I can 100% say he is one of the nicest people that you will ever meet. Again, another one of these people that is really quite nice to meet because again, they have that kind of childhood joy when they find plants. I remember um, apparently they went to some botanical gardens and Mick got very excited because he saw this plant that for everybody else would be like, this is a random plant. He said, I know this is really cool and you don't understand. Like you wouldn't be able to find this anywhere. Mick is amazing and a lot of information that's kind of shared from his profile all the time. 
in regards to specifically Monstera. I think that tends to be his kind of big thing. But he's a collector as well to a certain point like the rest of us. So it's not just Monstera's. Um, I know Mick is also one of those people that travels quite a bit, so it might be tricky to get uh, responses back, back fast from him, and he does have a very big following as well. But Mick is an amazing person, and his heart is in the right place. Right? And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, because I mentioned Lisa briefly before when I was mentioning the plant swaps in London, because Lisa is, the, the two people that arrange the plant swaps is Emma from Good Growing, and then Lisa and she's got her Instagram handle, which is Happy Plant Collector. And Lisa is one of the nicest people you ever meet as well. She's got a great little collection as well. She, I, I really feel for Lisa because, if I'm not mistaken, I think she works in catering. And I used to work in catering for many years. So uh, it's just mind boggling to me that she's got a collection of her size and the plants are as happy as they are. And she's doing the weird hours that I know she's doing because I did the same kind of weird long days and weird hours. Like, where do you find the time? I used to come back home dead on my feet. Where do you find time to then spend planting and watering and caring for your plants? Uh, just, just the level of respect. But yeah, Lisa is just an amazing person with a great collection as well. Worth checking Lisa out as well. I'm coming into the podcasts, and this might be a bit of a quick fire one because I have mentioned them before, but I will say Matthew and Stephen from Plant Daddy Podcast, one of the original fans, both Matthew and Stephen are amazing individuals and really care about the community that they've built as well. There's a lot of kind of information that they can share. So Matthew's much more into the kind of aroids and everything else. Definitely a, a person that was trying to get me back into ficuses because I think Matthew really does enjoy growing ficuses. I've still tried. I'm still not there. But it's nice that he took the time to try to get me back into that as well. Stephen is much more on the side of more the succulents and the carnivorous plants. Both of them have got great um, kind of few. I think I, I think the collection is probably quite sizable at this point. Orchids on both of them sides. So fantastic kind of chance to hear both of them interact with that as well because they both bring different perspectives to possibly the similar kind of topics. They might do some deep dives into specific plants. They do some wider topics. They also have some amazing guests. So definitely check out Plant Daddy Podcast. And then the absolute legend that is Jane Perone and On The Ledge Podcast. Jane has been doing house planting podcasts since before anybody else are doing house planting podcasts. I'm pretty sure Jane has been doing it for longer than most people. Jane's background is, I think if I'm not mistaken, she used to write for either newspapers or magazines in the field of kind of gardening. And she kind of got back into her houseplants and all these things. Jane's one of the sweetest and loveliest people and really cares about the topics that she talks about. She brings in some amazing experts in the field. So definitely worth checking her out. I also did an episode with Jane a few weeks or months back now, actually, again, I'll link it down below, where we were looking at some of the plants that are trending, but were also big in the 70s and 80s. So are they new plants or is it just a new generation of people discovering the plants? It was really, really interesting, but definitely consider giving a listen to On The Ledge podcast. And then the last podcast I want to talk about is Maria Farfalla, I think is the last name. I am probably butchering that name. I will put it at the top there. And I kind of came into the podcast as Bloom and Grow Radio. And it's only recently when I was kind of looking at that, because, you know, if you're anything like me, you're just like, oh, yes, this is the podcast that I listen to. So I just listen to the next episode, listen to the next episode. And I was just like, oh, I think we've had a name change <laughs> somewhere along the way. So I think it's called uh growing joy i think i'll put it up the top there as well but yeah maria again one of those people that has that sheer level of excitement about plants if i'm not mistaken she was into kind of the entertainment industry before that's what her like job was i'm trying to remember if she was more of a singer or a dancer or all these things on 
kind of big stage productions. I think she's now moved in full time into what she loves, which is the plants and all of the notion behind it. And that kind of self-care, I think, is a big thing that she's doing this year. And I think last year as well. So definitely worth checking out Maria's podcast. And this is where we start coming into the tips and bits for the people in the UK. Again, some of this you might already know, but I thought I would talk about. So these are my favorite shops, predominant, predominantly online with these ones so that it's easily accessible for everybody in the UK. But the first one I want to talk about, first two actually, are also locally based. And I've had the absolute delight to meet the business owners of these businesses. And they are both amazing individuals who also have a passion for their hobby themselves, which I think makes a huge, huge difference. So the first one is Turner Tropical. And Carl's the person who runs Turner Tropical. And again, I will have links for everybody down below. But Carl and Turner Tropical are quite interesting because Carl has a passion for tropical plants, but not just the ones that everybody wants. Yes, a lot of the times you can get those available from his store as well. But Carl has been doing this for a while. His other kind of business is a landscaping business. So he's very good at actually kind of introducing tropical plants to the UK that could potentially also survive outdoors, might be hardy or might be semi-hardy for the UK. So you're talking about the big palms and all of these things that you might have in your garden, not necessarily in your house, as well as the house plants as well. So amazing. If you ever want to kind of get introduced to some really interesting and unique plants, a lot of the plants that I have featured sometimes on my weird house plants videos have come from Carl. Carl is also a font of information when it comes to some of the plants that we have in our collections. And he's very humble about it. He's always a bit like, he might send you a message and just go, actually, it's this. And I'm just like, dude, dropping like knowledge bombs all the time. Absolutely fantastic. Carl is awesome. Check out Turner Tropical. Eastern Tropicals is the other one that I was mentioning. And Sarah, and for the people in the UK, if you've ever purchased or looked to buy a kind of rare or difficult to find plant, you have probably come across Sarah 100%. Again, local individual had a chance to meet her as well. So with Carl, Carl grows in a polytunnel year round. So it's a, I think that he heats it over the winter and I had a chance to go and see the polytunnel. <laughs> It was huge. It was amazing. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I needed a moment. Uh, but Sarah is also growing in her space as well. I went to the previous space that she had. I think since then she has moved in the middle of the pandemic. So we had fun conversations with Sarah when I was moving in the middle of kind of lockdowns as well. <laughs> Sometimes. And moving with a collection of that size as well. So um, I think Sarah's collection was definitely <laughs> bigger than mine because she's obviously got a shop. But fantastic plants, great prices. And a lot of the times you will only find some of these things on Sarah's website on a regular basis as well. And she is one of the nicest people that you will ever meet as well. She's quite good with some of the local people. I don't know if this is still something that she does, but you can also go and do um, a click and collect kind of thing or kind of purchase and pick up from her as well. And the packaging, from what I've heard from other people, is absolutely spectacular. The plants that she sends out are absolutely spectacular. Great, great online business. And then we've got Jacob and Grow Tropicals. And I've had an opportunity to meet Jacob a couple of times now at a few of the events, essentially, that we were both at. Uh, one that he organized up in Leeds. And I've done a video, my plant panel video, and I'll link it at the top, was organized by Jacob and I think a few other businesses there. But... Yeah, Grow Tropicals probably doesn't need much of an introduction, at least here in the UK. Huge selection of different plants as well. Not just the, the kind of standard, you know, the pink princesses and the Monstera Thai or the Monstera Albas and all these things, but other because Jacob and his team are really good at introducing us to different plants, not just within the philodendron and anthurium genera, but also other genera altogether. And I think that's what, for me, Grow Tropicals does exceptionally well, is bringing kind of more awareness to different genera of tropical houseplants, not just the ones that everybody's looking for. Absolutely amazing. Check them out. A fantastic one, and hopefully one that I should maybe have some videos because I've had a chance to go and visit, 
is Gebbin Green, which is a brand spanking new online seller. If I'm not mistaken, they also sell to businesses, but a company called Gebbin Green, which is one of the first, I think the first glass house in the UK growing tropical plants in the UK sustainably or as sustainable as they can do. So the heat, the glass house with uh, biomass, they're 97% peat free, which is great. And they've done a lot of research and kind of like definitely check out their website because I think a lot of us forget quite how much of a carbon footprint a lot of the plants that we might get. They were sharing recently about how many tons, I think it was tons of CO2 is needed to bring one rose in from things like Africa for things like Valentine's Day. And it's an obscene amount of money. And I think it was something like driving down to London a couple of times. It was a lot, basically. So, yeah. But fantastic collection of plants. It's a new business as well that's starting off as well. They're slowly kind of growing the business as well. But the plants that I saw were fantastic. The the space was absolutely mind-boggling. It was one of those days that I was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe I am here. It's fantastic. And as I said, hopefully... I will have some clips to add to this section as well. Going into some of my favorite media or growing materials that I use around my space. First one, and I've mentioned this so many times on my channel, Soul Ninja. I can't believe that I was sleeping on them as a brand for as long as I did. I got to meet the individuals, two of the individuals from the team during the last London plant swap. and absolutely lovely and i've had a chance to speak to quite a few of the team members by this point uh they have opened up business in europe now so if you ever want to discover some of their products in europe now you can it's not just limited to the uk so yeah absolutely fantastic i've got their soil mixes i've got their components i have now pretty much transitioned all of my plants that were in choose the pond to their semi-hydro mix, the coarse semi-hydro mix. They've also got a fine semi-hydro mix. The other brand that I do want to mention is, and obviously one that I've been using for a long period of time, which is Lechuza Pond. I would have to say that I prefer the stuff from the Soul Ninja guys. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. And also in terms of knowledge that these individuals have as well, their websites, and I don't think they mentioned this enough. If you really want to find out more about some of these components that we use in some of our own mixes or their mixes, their kind of blog or kind of resource area is absolutely fantastic. They also do have a breakdown of by different plant genera or even by specific plants, which of their soil mixes they recommend or components and things like that. Absolutely spectacular business. The other one, <laughs> which anybody who has been on my channel for long enough will know is liquid gold leaf. I mean, <laughs> most of my plants wouldn't be the size that they are, I don't think, without liquid gold leaf. It is the one kind of liquid fertilizer that I use and have been using for probably going on almost four years now, three or four years, I would say. And fantastic, swear by it, swear by it. I mean, I've tried a lot of the different fertilizers before, but nothing touches what liquid gold leaf can do. And I think they've also potentially, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, they've maybe started also selling in some of Europe as well, or some other countries as well, I think. And if they have, I will kind of put a link down below as well to a page that you can see where they're selling to at the moment. Because I know this is a question that I got a lot over the years on we want to get it, but how do we get it? And I'll, I'll put a link down below. But yeah, it's uh, as far as I'm aware, the only fertilizer that you've got that has already got calcium inside of it. It's also how many other fertilizers can you put regular tap water and it dechlorinates the tap water on contact. So I'm thinking Calatheas. And really, it has some of the crispy tips have really disappeared on most of my Calatheas since starting to use liquid gold leaf. And crucially for me, especially based on how many of my plants now are in semi-hydro, 
Yeah, for anybody who's got into semi-hydros and they're mixing their blooms and their micronutrients and their grow nutrients and they're looking for pH lockout. And some of you might be looking at me going, you're speaking in Greek. I'm not. <laughs> There's a whole host of like things that you really need to find out when you're getting into that. Or you just don't and use liquid gold leaf because that's what I do. And you just mix it in and it works beautifully for semi-hydro. You don't have to worry about any of that. It does all the heavy lifting for you. One thing instead of several bottles and testings and all these things. Mm -hmm. So works like a charm. Coming into some of my favorite things specifically. So for DIY, one of the things that I'm really quite enjoying at the moment, and I have done a video about it pre-Christmas or around Christmas, I will put it at the top and link it there, is using some things called air stones. I think there is another word which I'm it's not coming to me right now, but this is something that people that have used aquariums for a long time will know about. And it kind of releases bubbles into like a water solution. I build a propagation device with using that. And I do need to do an update video on that because I have checked roots on the cuttings because it didn't do very much for very long, but it was also during the coldest days that we had in the year. So, and it took a while to kind of get going, but I kind of started lifting up some of the net pots that I had in it. And I'm just like, damn, I need to repot these, but I also need to do a video for us to show you the level of root growth. <laughs> and then I'll do the repot with those plots. And I kind of need to do that soon because that's the space that eventually will turn into my allotment seedling spaces. And for the people that I have been asking from last year, if I can do a couple of videos on allotment life and kind of how I grow some of the vegetables and all these things, that will be coming this year. Because I know some of you, actually quite a few of you have asked for that. So don't worry, I will put it in the video title that it's not about houseplants and it is about vegetables. So if you don't want to see it, it's not for you, you don't have to. So the next one that people have asked me about, and I will see if I can pick one up and show you. There we go, I've picked up one so you might be able to see and hopefully it will focus. Can you see the holes in the plastic cup? I 100% cannot take credit for that as a concept. That was from the lovely individual that I got my Philodendron Dean McDowell from in London during the last plant swap. And I know that that individual does watch my videos on occasion. So if you would like to introduce yourself down below, you can, but I don't like to name people if I don't have permissions. So amazing idea. And I saw this on the pot that I got my kind of rooted cutting in. And I'm just like, oh my God, this makes sense. This is, this, this just makes sense. So you're essentially creating a bit of the concept of more aeration in kind of almost a concept of that net pot situation with just regular plastic cups that a lot of us use to propagate our cuttings in, especially if you're propagating in something that is semi-hydro, so either Lekka or the Choose a Pond or the semi-hydro mix from Soul Ninja, all of these things. And it just worked really well. And I don't know, I never asked that individual how they got the holes onto their cups. But what I did was just a soldering iron outside because I'm pretty sure those fumes are not good for anybody. But the way that I think about it is if I do like 20 minutes of that and I can do quite a few cups and I'm not inhaling it for too much, but uh, uh, I am not encouraging you to in be inhaling toxic fumes. I'm just saying what I do. You could probably do it with a drill set and all these things. Probably that would be fine. Or maybe a hole punch if you can get one that goes deep enough, if that makes sense. But it has been a bit of a game changer when it comes to growing my plants. They really do like that extra bit of aeration through the roots, especially with uh, my semi-hydro mixes. I would imagine this would be the same if you're using a regular arrowed soil mix. Again, you're just introducing air within those roots and they do appreciate this. The next one is moss poles. And I'm very late to the party because I've been using janky support sticks for a long period of time, as well as planks. Planks is another one of my favorite DIY things. So using the kind of cork planks. And if I can remember, I will link it at the top as well. I did a video on that. But I've started to create those moss poles and I, there's probably a name for them that I don't know. 
which is the ones that have the clear plastic back and the mesh in the front and the moss in in inside. If that makes sense. I'm trying to see if there's any ones that I can show you. There is one here, and hopefully I won't get everything to drip. I don't know if you might be able to see. I'll see if I can get some close-ups and put them in on the video. But those are really, really cool and game changers. And I think that's something that Sydney plant guy has been doing for a long time. This is very similar to how he might grow some of his plants. I just didn't have the time or the patience to do it, but actually getting back into it and doing a bit more of that is okay. Still have the same issue that I was that I did back then. Flagman moss at the volume that you need to create some of these moss poles can be stupidly expensive. Am I doing something wrong? Am I buying like the really expensive stuff that nobody else is? Tell me in the comments down below what you use for your moss poles. The last thing I want to talk about DIY favorites. And this is something that's been a while, been around for a while, but using something like a plastic bag with the plant in the plastic bag as a propagation container. Obviously, we've all got prop boxes. People have got the IKEA cabinets. You can do all these things in the same space because it does create that space for you to kind of control high levels of humidity. However, if you don't have an IKEA cabinet, or if like a lot of people that do have an IKEA cabinet, it is heaving and you don't have any more space, things that people have been doing for years is using clear plastic bags, putting whatever cutting or something that they're trying to root or rehab into it and closing it at the top works like a charm. The thing that I will say, because for a long period of time I was using kind of the Ziploc kind of food baggies that most people might have around the house because it's something that they might put food in to put in the freezer. If you want to just spend a tiny bit of extra money, and most of these bags can be reused because they're quite thick, is getting the bags, and I can't remember what they're called, and if I can remember, I will add a link down below, but the bags that are used for transporting, and this is probably not humane, but I think that's how they are potentially sold, uh, fish, so goldfish and stuff like that. When you buy them, they tend to be in these much longer, clear plastic bags that can be kind of tied at the top. Those are my big tip when it comes to trying to propagate things that are quite tall that you want to do in a bag, but most bags probably wouldn't fit them if that makes sense. So tip on that one. So coming into my favorite instruments, and I've got some of these around the conservatory and you've probably seen me talk, seen them and heard me talk about them. That's, that's correct English. Um, one of them would be my Govi, I think it's Govi, Govi thermometer slash hydrometer, which is a smart thermometer hydrometer thing. I usually do have that one linked down in my description below. Game changer. Game changer. And I'll give you a very specific example. I have it in my space. I was on a holiday for two weeks back home. I say holiday. I was working remotely for the whole time I was there, but I guess I was in a different country and it was sunny and a bit warmer than the UK would have been. So wind. But <laughs> it wasn't relaxing. I got to relax the moment that I got on the plane to come back to the UK because anybody who travels back to see friends and family who live in a different country and only get to do these trips once a year or once every two years, you know that when you're there, it's not necessarily the most relaxing thing because you get paraded in front of family. And if you're of a certain younger generation, you also get the benefit of being tech support for free for everybody whilst you're there. The people that know, know. Um, but yeah, the, the Govi was great because it was really, really cold days. And because it's connected to the internet, I could check from my phone in Greece to see if my conservatory was warm or cold. So the person that was taking care of the conservatory for me, I could see that one or two nights it dropped really low. And I was able to kind of message them really quickly and just go, can you just quickly like touch up the, the, um, the, the, the thermostat? Thermostat, that's the word I'm looking for, the thermostat for the radiator so that the temperature doesn't drop quite so much at night when it's freezing, freezing cold, because I would have had no way of A, knowing this or being able to action it had I not have done this. It's also really good because it sends you notifications on your phone. So days in the summer when it gets ridiculously hot or way too humid, and I know that I need to open a window, it sends pings me on my phone going, it's way too hot. Like you can set a threshold for both the humidity and the temperature that it sends you a message on, both high and low, so good to know. The other thing, and I'll show you, this is a brand new toy, and it's 
changed my life. So for the longest period of time, I was using an apologies for how filthy this is, but this is a siphon pump. So for my bigger plants, when I've got drip trays at the bottom, they fill up with water as I'm watering them and I use the siphon to kind of manually pump out the water. <sighs> There's an automatic one now with batteries at the top and you shove this in and I will switch it on and apologies if the noise gets loud. Maybe not that loud. And you don't need the gravity to work in your favor. So you can do it at higher locations and all these things. Absolutely amazing. Best purchase so far this year that isn't a plant. Right. The next thing might surprise some of you, but apologies how disgusting this looks. It's got some algae in it, but it's used all the time. This is the same thing as the siphon. So I would use a turkey baster to suck out the water from the smaller kind of dishes if I need to kind of take out the water so that the plant isn't sitting in water. This works a charm and they're not particularly expensive on places like Amazon. So this is one thing. And the one that will trigger a few of you is the fact that I still swear by my moisture meter. No, it's not for everyone. I know it can give false readings. If you do it properly, I have never had a problem with it and it's been relatively accurate for me. Using it properly is the key and I'm not gonna go into how to use it properly. There are plenty of other videos that will kind of talk about that in more detail. The one thing I will say is you can get ones with two probes or one with one probe. I know the ones with the two probes tend to be slightly more accurate, but the ones with the one probe are still relatively accurate for me. I prefer this because it's a lot easier to get into any growing media without causing that much damage to the roots. The ones I find with the two probes can be a bit hard to jab in, especially if you're trying to get it low enough on the bigger plants to see if there's any water way down low, basically. So that's the thing I would say. I prefer the one with the one probe, essentially. Coming into the final section, and this is a very long video. I don't know if this is maybe my longest video. Editing will tell. But coming into my favorite plants at the moment, I was thinking about doing genera or specific plants. But genera, I'd be a bit samey with everybody else and I get a lot of slack already for this, is my generas would probably be the monsteras, the philodendrons, the anthuriums, the syngoniums. I'm trying to think of what else. Is that it? Begonias. Those would be the big five for me, but they, they probably are for a lot of people. So I thought I'd go about talking about my favorite specific plants. So it might come as no surprise to some people, but my Anthurium beachii, my King Anthurium is amazing. I'm still loving it very much. So I wasn't gonna mention this, but it's right next to me. It's been slapping me for a long time. This is always gonna be one of my favorites. My, the Tarifolium, where the leaf, really is just like leather belts. And I don't think that's even the biggest leaf. I think this here is the biggest leaf. <laughs> that leaf is currently almost as tall as me and I'm about 5'10". So, <laughs> so yeah, so my Ethereum VGI, still love it. The leaves are getting large, they're getting the ruffles, the abs on those are coming in nicely still seems to be enjoying its life in semi-hydro. I'm losing one of the oldest leaves. I can see it now, it's yellowing off, but it's also the oldest and smallest leaf. So that's fine by me, basically. It's just, I find with a lot of anthuriums and I've already got four leaves on there, four or five leaves, and it started to bloom and I hadn't realized it. So with anthuriums, I find the more mature they are, if you kind of really let them bloom, especially if you're not planning on pollinating them, it does take away an awful lot of energy and it kind of slows them down for a bit until they can bounce back. So I did chop off that inflorescence quite recently. I don't know whether or not this is entirely accurate, but this has been my experience with most of my anthuriums. So, but yes, definitely one that I am still very much enjoying. Another one that I'm enjoying, and I know I have not had this plant for long enough, but I was over the moon because I got the first leaf that grew in my care is my Monstera, and I can't believe I'm saying this, my Monstera Oblica Peru. My Monstera Oblica Peru. <laughs> Memo from like a few years ago would have never believed that I would have talked about my Monstera Oblica Peru. <laughs> but yes, for the people that know, I did, and I'll link it at the top there, I did an unboxing 
for the first time I've ever ordered from Equigenera. And yes, there will be another order that I will be doing. And I want to try something different because they've got a pop-up store that is happening, I think, at some point later on in the spring in the UK. And it's relatively close enough for me to be able to get to. So I will try that route this time rather than getting it shipped directly to my house, seeing if the pop-ups make any difference. I got a lot of mixed reviews from all of you last time, especially from the peeps in America. So I want to see how that's going to come out. But yeah, it's it's definitely really giving me a lot of joy at the moment because I'm just like, oh my God, it's the first list. Uh, and it does look spectacular. And yes, there will be, I think, probably at this point, a two-month update since that order came in and what survived and what. I don't think I've had touch with any full casualties yet, but some of the things are struggling, basically. They're on the brink. And then <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the one of the largest leaved plants that I've got in my collection. And it's usually the background for most of my videos, except for this one. I thought I'd bring you to a different location this time around. My philodendron smeraldens. <laughs> I think somebody said the other day, maybe in one of my comments or maybe on Instagram, that I'm single-handedly raising the sales levels of the Esmeralda dance because everybody that sees it on my channel goes, oh, I need to have one of those. But yes, it's still very much one of my favorites. And I am currently layering it to take some of the first cuttings I have ever taken from this plant. So watch this space. The next one is the plant behind me. And I never thought I'd be saying this about this plant and you can probably not see it that well because it's quite high up. It is my Philodendron Milano Chrysan. And I say I'm surprised by this because I'm not one that's hugely enamored by velvety leaves. Generally, I won't go out of my way to get them in my care or in my collection. And that is one that took a while to get established, but it's starting to size up nicely, bizarrely enough, without a moss pole. But hey, I'm enjoying it a lot more now that the leaves are getting a lot larger. And have to mention this one because it was on my wish list for years and I've already mentioned the person that I got this from and the, the pots with the holes in them my philodendron Dean McDowell uh, the fact that I have finally got them and I do know that you can occasionally get them a bit more frequently these days but I have wanted that plant for such a long time that I am so glad I got it and do I think it's better than the Passazanum? 100% much, much better. Those pillowy big leaves are everything. I don't know if I would go as far, maybe not yet, because I haven't got it quite to the same size. I was saying this might be a contender to be even better for me than my Gloriosum. And note that my Gloriosum isn't in this. Doesn't mean that I'm not still enjoying my Gloriosum, but it's not in my top, 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 top favorites currently. But yes, I think I have prattled on for far too long on this video. But as I said in the beginning, hopefully this might kind of introduce a lot of new people or things or shops to you that you might have not have heard of, specifically if you live in the UK and maybe a bit of Europe. But I do encourage you, and the reason why I sectioned it off the way that I did is if you want to do the same down below, you don't have to mention as many as I did because it does take a bit of time. But you can say, you know what, I live in the Philippines. And you know what, these are some of the best people that I follow on Instagram. And these are some of the favorite shops that I use. Please do so down below. I would love to see it. And I'm sure other people from your local region of the world would love to see this. And this video can maybe become a bit of a resource to kind of get introduced to some new plant accounts or shops or kind of materials that you like to use, things like that. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.